All right, y'all. Welcome to episode two of the Purposeful Talk podcast. And today, I have a special guest, Markel Crawford. Yes, uh, he's a religious leader here in our community in Memphis, man. And uh, I had to get him on here because we got to definitely talk about a lot of stuff going on in the world. Yeah. This uh, this religion, Christianity, and how culture is, you know, trying to you know, force a lot of things, a lot of people and stuff like this. So we're gonna really dive into it, man. But first and foremost, you know, I'll let you, you know, speak your speak your mind, yeah, yeah, man, yeah. And, and tell us about yourself, man. Okay, uh, my name is Markel Crawford. Uh, I'm a youth pastor at a church called Standard Setters Ministry here in Memphis. Uh, man, I met Princeton, what, middle school? Yeah, that's so it's been a minute. I've, I've known him for a minute. But yeah, uh, I'm just glad to be here, man. I'm just ready to dive into some of these topics because the stuff that you said we were talking about is actually like some of the stuff I've been kind of listening to and studying recently. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm excited to get into it. Man. Yeah, yes, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. We're definitely going to do that for sure, man. Uh, I think one of the biggest things I want to uh, start us off on is like, as far as you being young, man, mm -hmm. like, when did you like understand, you know, because this, you know, us being part of the Purpose Talks podcast, we really talk yeah. about like our purpose and how yeah. we got to that purpose and how we, you know, whatever our lane and journey was to get there, how did they yeah. come about? So yeah. for me, man, like for you, you know, I've I seen you doing a lot of work, man, in the mm -hmm. church and, and in the community and stuff like this. So yeah. how was life before you, you know, really got involved and after you got involved, how did you see your life change? Uh, so before I got involved, man, like I, I grew up in church, so I was always around church. I was I always like knew who God was, but I didn't like I hadn't submitted my life to him, you know. Mm -hmm. And so uh, before that, like before I got involved, man, I was out here doing all kinds of stuff, like man, smoking heavy, drinking mm -hmm. heavy, you know, just having sex every, doing all kinds of stuff, man. Mm -hmm. And uh, I actually felt like I was called to ministry when I was like 15, but mm -hmm. I didn't I didn't do it. Like I was at this camp in Oklahoma City, mm -hmm. and it was like, you feel like you've been called to ministry, come down to the stage. But I didn't go, but I knew I was supposed to go. It was just something inside of me. It was like, okay, you need to be down here, uh -huh. but I didn't go. So fast forward 10 years later, maybe, when I was 25, okay. and I went through a relationship, went through a breakup and all that, depressed and all this kind of stuff, uh -huh. and then I just felt God telling me, okay, like it's time, you know. And so, since then, my life has changed. Like, like now, I know who God is, but now I, like, I know His ways now. Uh -huh. And so, like now, my life it is not that life ain't still stressful. Like I get stressed sometimes, stuff get hard. But mm -hmm. now I know who God is, and so instead of me like trying to make stuff happen on my own, I I just obey God and obey His principles, and I see my life moving in the direction that He wanted to go in. And now, now I see God as my provider because I actually see him providing for me. Like, I'm not just saying this because mm -hmm. it sounds good. Like, I actually see him provide for me. Yeah. So I, I guess the, the biggest difference, man, is just, like, trusting God and just actually seeing it work out in my life, see how it play out. So, man, yeah, that's the biggest difference. Man, it's deep, man. Yeah. man you, you touched on a lot of things. Uh, mm -hmm. As far as, like, the breakup, right, that you went through mm -hmm. the breakup for you to get yeah. to that, do you think that um, <clears throat> as far as, like the breaking of relationships and friendships like that, do you think that God sets it up for you to learn from and to build on? Or do you feel like it's more so a situation that like you have to go you have to go through that for you to mm -hmm. unlock a new level? Like which way you perceive it as for you for you to like get uh, to where you at now. <laughs> uh, so at first I thought it was something that I had to go through. Mm -hmm. But it's not something that I had to go through because all this stuff can be avoided. Like, life is just choices. Yeah. So your life is just how you choose to do stuff. Like, the the girl I was with, we probably could have got married and been where I am now. Like, we could have been doing ministry together or something. Yeah. But it was just who I was and the choices I was making. And so, uh, like, it's a verse that a lot of people hear all the time, Romans 8 and 28. Mm -hmm. That, uh, you know, we know all things work for the good of those who are called according, you know, according to his purpose, who love God and the call according yeah. to his purpose. And so it's not that we have to go through stuff, it's just that when we do go through stuff, God just uses that stuff to get us where he needs us to be. Oh, man. Okay. And so it's not that we have to go through, like, bad times. We have to go through all this kind of stuff. It's just that when we do, God just uses it. And I feel like God just used that to get me, you know what I'm saying, like, back to where he wanted me to be. 
Uh, but I don't think I just had to go through it. Like, you know, I could have made better decisions. Yeah, you know? I you. I, uh, when I was in Germany, I had one of my barbers, man. He mm -hmm. uh, he told me, he was like, man, I already went to jail for you. And I was like, you know, he first said yeah, it, I just, wow, right. I was like, what you mean with the jail yeah. for me? But he was saying it isn't like, like, Preston, you, you never been to jail. So yeah. the fact that you never been there, I've yeah. been there on your behalf. Yeah, so I'm yeah, telling yeah. you it's not the place to go. Like exactly. and this and this kind of like the same thing yeah. you said. Like I've been through a tough relationship or mm -hmm. a tough friendship or uh, situation. Yeah. You don't have to go through that because I've been through that. So yeah. when I hear you say that, it's speaking to me too because yeah. like I, I'm I, I'm going through a breakup. I, mm -hmm. I just recently went through a breakup, right? Yeah. So for me, I had to like calculate like why why did this happen this way? Like yeah. what did I do wrong? Was mm -hmm. this something that God wanted me to go through for mm -hmm. me to tell other people about mm -hmm. and for them to like develop from yeah. you know so like some things you think like he places you there mm -hmm. because he wants a testimony from you like he wants you to testify of it because yeah. most of the time we go through bad stuff like stock market crashing mm -hmm. losing money debt whatever it is yeah. we don't want to tell nobody about it yeah. we don't want to exactly. talk about it because yeah. it's it's a it's a ding on it it's, it's a it's a demerit in a way. Yeah. You don't wanna you don't wanna wear the badge of honor because mm -hmm. we look at social media, everybody doing good. Yeah, exactly. You know, everybody doing great. Yeah, everybody ain't fine and dandy. You know, that's yeah. what that's what they show. But the trenches and the build up of it is the mm -hmm. part that we have to like understand and I agree with you on that, like yeah. We don't have to go through the stuff we went through where we chose their way. I told yeah. somebody that this week, I was like, Man, the path already set. Yeah, it really exactly. is already yeah. set. Like God already didn't say everything. He know what he know the day that you're gonna live, mm -hmm. the day you were born, all the way to the day you're gonna die. So he yeah. know all in between. Mm -hmm. And he already set the whole path for you. So mm -hmm. it's just you have to make a choice. You're gonna go left or right, left or right, exactly. right up, or yeah. you're gonna keep making three <laughs> lefts to the right. Yeah. Like the, either way, you're gonna keep gravitating back to it. Even yeah. if you are 40 years old and stuff like that. And this is the thing that I wanna go into next is how like a lot of the churches now we see a lot of the elderly people more mm -hmm. so in the church active more than the youth mm -hmm. and i think it's more so the choice thing like yeah. you can choose to go to church on sunday or you mm -hmm. choose to not go to church on sunday yeah. you know it, that's a choice you have to make for yourself but you could choose to also either be involved or not involved yeah. so it's like those things for you like how do you uh perceive well how do you think why do you think like the youth today don't make their religion a priority and it's just across mm -hmm. the board you know i know people that are watching maybe a different religion but like yeah. don't make their their religion a priority and i ask it acts in that way because you've seen it in their realm like so mm -hmm. i know you're probably trying to give you the part of this stuff and like what yeah. what do they you know uh what you think about that uh man the first thing is just man the bible is just true you know like in the bible in the new testament they say it'll be a great falling away meaning like it's going to be a period of time where people just start leaving church but th that's the thing is like people leaving church mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like a lot of people not necessarily leaving god they're just leaving church and it it's hard bro because it's like you want people to come to church and all that but then when you look back at the history of what's happened in churches like pastors not being transparent you know mm -hmm. or pastors we we condemning people for sin and all this kind of stuff when we doing the same stuff ourselves mm -hmm. And it's like, man, well, how can, you, how can you talk down on somebody and you doing the same stuff they doing? And so I think that's what it is. Like, it's a lack of transparency. And then it's just like a hypocritical pastor, man. And it's, a, you know, in the Bible, they talk about, too, not laying down the foundation of repentance. So, like, one of the things I've been studying lately is the kingdom of God. Like, what is the kingdom of heaven? Like, because Jesus taught the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. Jesus didn't teach it about Jesus. He taught about the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. And so one of the secrets that was revealed from Jesus was righteousness. Mm -hmm. So once Jesus died, he died for all our sin. And yeah. so in Hebrews, they wrote, well, let's not talk about like just sin and all that. Like, like leave that alone. Like, let's start teaching people about the kingdom of heaven. And that's what we ain't doing. Like, we keep going back to that. Okay, well, you doing this wrong. You doing this wrong. You doing this wrong. But we don't want to point the finger at ourselves and yeah. be transparent and be like, okay, well, I'm struggling with this too. Yeah. And so I think the generation nowadays, they just want people to be transparent with them. And they're not getting it at church. So it's like, well, if you're not going to be transparent, I'll go find it somewhere else. 
Man. So I, I think that's why, you know. Yeah, I, I feel you on that. I got, yeah. I have people um, around me that are younger. You know, mm -hmm. they, they come for me for guidance and questions and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. it can be like basic things, you know. Yeah. Um, it can be relationship, friendship, you know, what they should do with their life. Like all of those things. And it's in my mind, I'm like, man, like. Where your daddy is? You know, I'm, I'm yeah, not trying yeah. to be offensive no, about no, it, but I, like, I where is your, where, where yeah, your yeah. father? Like, where was that? I know yeah. that. I know in my life, and you know, my my dad had a lot of responsibility and stuff like that. Yeah. Also, my mother too. So like, it's hard to like find guy that's not there for me. And yeah. It's kind of difficult. I ain't gonna lie, it is. But what I can say, even with my dad, he was transparent. Like, if I ask yeah. him a question, yeah. he gonna be direct to answer it. Like, exactly. if I say, hey, <laughs> hey, dad, you know, yeah. I got a question about this, yeah. and he come around like. All right, and this the answer. Mm -hmm. Like he's yeah. not gonna sugarcoat it. So like yeah. I'm glad I had that transparency. Yeah. And uh, when I was younger, I was hesitant to ask those questions. Yeah. But I, when I became older, I was more open to like actually, hey, they like, oh, why is this this way, or, or yeah. why is this? And, and this is me, you know, early twenties, you know, going yeah. to my mid twenties, asking right. those questions. Yeah. But seeing it is like, man, like we at the ages where we the OGs now. We we, yeah, we thirty, exactly. you know. What I'm saying? So. <laughs> Now we the ones that got the experience and yeah. stuff and they come to us because they obviously see that we are light in some way. They see yeah. that we're not trying to put bad into the world. We're not malicious. Mm -hmm. We're actually trying to put good out there and we're trying to yeah. actually sow stuff into the world. But it's hard because this Memphis, man, you can throw the seeds everywhere, but it's like yeah. they keep stealing the seeds and, yeah. you know, and the water gone. It's like, yeah. come on, man. Like, we trying yeah. hard, you know. So I feel you on that. And this is goes into, like, like to my next subject is more mm -hmm. so, like, with the relationship piece, like yeah. it's it's kind of it's kind of it's kind of <laughs> it's kind of like deep sometimes, but yeah. it got to be talked about. Yeah. Like, do you do you believe like things change after you have sex with somebody? Like, as far as the yeah. relationship go, like yeah. you can be unequally. I know you're gonna talk about that probably, but like, yeah. do you believe that a relationship with a woman, you know? And as far as a man go, you once you have sex with them, like mm -hmm. the results of that, and also the negative effects that can come from that, like yeah. what's your perspective on that? Yeah, okay, see, now I can get into some good stuff. Now I can be, you know, <laughs> not so. Uh, so, one thing I learned, and I, I, I speak from a perspective first of like me being a pastor. One thing mm -hmm. I learned from my pastor the minute that you have sex with a woman outside of marriage, she instantly loses respect for you. Because like me, I'm saying I'm a pastor, I'm this, this, and that. But then she she gave me, you know, like we had sex. So she knew that she had something between her legs that was powerful enough to make me uh, compromise on my beliefs. And I think it's the same way even in relationships like people who, who not pastor. Like a woman know that what she got in between her legs is powerful. And so it's like, okay, well... If I can get him to fold and give him this, then I can get anything I want. And she, why, why would woman respect you after that? Like, what else is it that you got that, you know what I'm saying? Like, if she knows she can get you there, then why? You know, like, why would I respect you beyond Ooh. that? You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> what the little wine? Yeah. Hey. hey. Or even, that's uh, deep, though. That's deep. Right. Even in the Bible, we, we see Samson, like. Oh my God! Sam, please Sam. talk about man. This. Okay, the people that don't know this story, please give them the <laughs> youth version. This one was give them good, the youth, right? and give them the youth version of their thing. Because the people that don't know about <laughs> Samson, what happened? And if you watch it being milk and don't know what happened, yeah. it's a scene in the movie, in the show, mm -hmm. where the girl sniffs off his hair. Oh, so like they don't, they didn't. Get, oh, I appreciate, okay, okay. I appreciate y'all don't know what that meant when y'all watch me and Mel. Y'all watch everything oh, else, right, yeah, but he yeah, gonna yeah, explain yeah. about the hair and what's going on. So y'all give him that preacher. Go okay, give it to so him. Samson was a character, and just I don't even like to say character because we know the Bible truth. Yeah, yeah. Samson was a man in the Book of Judges in the Bible. Mm -hmm. The uh, God prophesied to his mom and daddy that his power would be in his hair, like he had superhuman strength, but the power that he had was in his hair. And so, what Samson did was, he won, He went and married a woman that was not of like the Jewish uh, descent or you know, like the yeah, Jewish lineage. And so there was a sin in those days. Mm -hmm. And so what Samson did was, he ended up meeting this woman named Delilah. Mm -hmm. And the thing <laughs> about Samson, I remember T.D. Jake said, Samson didn't look like he had strength. Or he like this was something he had said because if he looked like he had this strength then the woman would have never asked where his strength lied and so 
like, okay, let me give a little bit of backstory on it. So Delilah, what Delilah would do, she kept trying to figure out where his power was coming from so she could trap him and they could Yeah, they kept asking, yeah, yeah, and yeah. figure out what the hell figure out. They kept sending her yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, I remember, yeah, yeah. And so that's why T.D. Jakes was like, well, if, if, he, if he looked like he was somebody that was strong, why would they have to ask where his power was? And so what ended up happening was he, he set up this riddle. He gave Delilah this riddle. Mm -hmm. And so he finally ended up telling her the answer to it. But what was going on was, he was having sex with her doing, you know, doing X, Y, Z before they was even married. And so he ended, she ended up figuring out the answer to the riddle and figured out that his strength was in his hair. And so when she got, when she figured it out, her family uh, came, they cut off his hair and they ended up, you know, taking them and killing them. But he ended up killing them along, you know, like as he died, he killed them too because mm -hmm. God gave him a last little bit of strength. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I don't even how we get because we was talking about... Uh, the power. We're the, talking about the, the power, power. Oh, of, yeah, know, yeah. with a woman and how they can, how, how yeah, she yeah. respects you even if you yeah, do yeah. have sex with her and stuff. How you lose that power? Yeah, yeah. Because I've been getting to the power. No, no, no. I want like, you know, like, that story told though because yeah. like there's people that don't understand how entertaining the Bible is, yeah. and I'm not saying entertainment is like it's a movie. But I mean, yeah. like it is actually a very, very good book. Period. Yeah. One of the, like that's why it's one of the top selling books of all time because mm -hmm. it definitely. Uh, it's a lot of life principles in it, but also yeah. real life examples of what people went through. Like, these yeah. went through a lot of stuff, man. The lady that was sick for how long she was sick for 12, for 12 years, years. Yeah. and she just touched God roll like this, yeah. and she was better. She like, was. I mean, in, in 12 years, they couldn't yeah. find out nothing yeah. was going on. The woman, the woman kept going to die. Yeah. Like, man, I don't know, yeah. I, don't yeah. know I don't know what to do. And then <laughs> she found Jesus, man, and he yeah. walking in the group full of people. Mm -hmm. And then she touched his robe, and he was, he, she was yeah. healed. So, like, these are all stories in in in, in there, and mm. and even if you're trying to find yourself, find your way with your Christianity or religion, like yeah. their their book will teach you a lot. Like mm. it will teach you a lot, and if you actually are serious about it, you can see principles these people did. Because at yeah. the end of the day, man, the people back in the day was way more disciplined than what we are now. Oh, like yeah. the discipline level that they had, like imagine fasting forty days, forty nights right now. Yeah. And somebody come with a plate of food. You know, that's yeah. what happened with Jesus. That's exactly what happened. Yeah. 40 days, bro. And God said, what did he say? He said, a man should not be uh, live off bread yeah, alone. Bread long, now, come on, man. Down. Like that, yeah. If there's not this one, I don't know what is. Yeah. Like, and that's why we, that's why what, for me personally, I try to sh let people know, like, you have to have discipline and mm -hmm. development. Yeah. And that's what they were doing. Basically, that's what they were doing. Yeah. That's the basic. I don't yeah. even want to go too deep, but if you look at the Ten Commandments and all that stuff is mm -hmm. basically just you just developing yourself and being mm -hmm. disciplined along the way. Yeah. Because as you discipline yourself, God will keep giving you stuff. Mm -hmm. He'll keep giving you stuff. Adding, okay, I like what you're doing, I like what you're doing, mm -hmm. I like what you're doing. And you yeah. keep developing yourself. Oh yeah, let me give you this knowledge. Oh let me yeah. let me lead you this this scripture mm -hmm. or whatever. I remember one of my friends, yeah. he said, Man, what that? he uh he takes me one day, man, like I, you got something to recommend or whatever. I said, man, the Bible, bro. Yeah, like it. I say, that's he it. he open he opened up out yeah. out came to a scripture that did yeah. him. So I was <laughs> yeah. like, that's the okay. game. This is all the that's Bible. It. And yeah. it, it, it'll it'll let you know. Yeah. So like we so we talked about Trying that. We talked about the, the sex yeah. part and stuff like that. Yeah. But I don't think people understand this, but I think yeah. you should be I think you are able to articulate it. Yeah. What does unequally yoked mean? And what is that mm. what is that for a relationship? And mm. if I'm a single man or woman, how do I know this person is equally yoked to me, so I don't have mm -hmm. to end up in a soul type situation yeah. or, or something like that. Like, how can you break yeah. that down? So, um, when you read the verse, it says, do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. It never said anything about marriage, though. And we just took that scripture and just applied it to, like, all this worldly stuff. Like, uh, one thing that my pastor always does is point me back to the Bible. He says, okay, either it says this or it don't, or it don't say this. The verse never said anything about marriage. And so we think unequally yoked mean uh, the first thing that comes to mind all the time is money. We think unequally yoked mean, well, I got more money than you. You ain't got this much money, so we not equally yoked. Mm -hmm. Or we think, uh, you know, like I, I live here, you live here. And so mm -hmm. we are equally yoked. Social you know, status, man. Social stuff. Mm -hmm. The Bible never said anything about money when it came to marriage. It never said anything about you should have... X, Y, Z, you got to have your own house, you got to have a car, you got to The Bible never talked about any of that when it came to marriage. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about being unequally yoked, even beyond just like 
unbeliever, believing unbeliever, like that's just that's basically like okay, if I'm a believer, you're not a believer. We we not gonna have the same principles. We're gonna be divided. Yeah. But beyond that, it's more so just about like mindset. Mm -hmm. Like if we both got the mindset, like okay, I want to serve God. I'm seeking His kingdom first. Like okay, like I don't see why you wouldn't want to marry that person. Like we both attracted to each other. That like that's just the basis of it. But the world made us put all these standards on top of marriage. Every day you get on YouTube, you see a different video where he got to have this, 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 and this. She got to have this, this, and this. She got to have You're like, skipping me, man. You're skipping me. You're yeah, skipping me. I got like, the question next. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you, you right, though. You yeah, right. You definitely yeah, right. You all this stuff to mm -hmm. marriage. And it's like mm -hmm. the Bible never said none of that. So. Yeah, it, it, it don't. And I think, yeah. I think society is like, man, it's full of divide, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Divide left and right. And like, like you piggyback what you said about the mm -hmm. YouTube thing. What do you think about like this? Okay, so the, the new narratives, right? Like yeah. I said, because they always say I'm, I want to talk about culture, but also yeah. integrate that with how they, how they're trying to like manipulate the situation yeah. by using these Christian principles that mm -hmm. some of them aren't even realistic, or some of them yeah. actually weren't even established by God. Yeah. So like. When it comes to relationships, we have this new this new uh, term called high value male, right? So yeah. it's a new term, high value male, right? And yeah. then you have uh, women with children yeah. that are considered not value. So yeah. like if a woman has any kids and yeah. she's single, and the high value male mm -hmm. uh, wants to date her, he's considered what they call a simp. So a yeah. person that doesn't value himself because yeah. he dated somebody with That's kids. So What's your perspective on that? And and if and if that is if that is you think it's true or whatever, elaborate yeah. why that is true. But mm -hmm. if not, like how do you how do you feel that is even um, a realistic relationship to be in? Some uh, high value mm -hmm. male that doesn't have kids date somebody with kids and vice yeah. versa being it they quote unquote title. Uh, okay, so going back to like the whole like even Kevin Samuels thing yeah, yeah, yeah. before he died. Yeah. We got to realize, I think he used to throw out this statistic, said like only like 2% of men made like over make six figures, over, yeah. make six figures and over. Yeah. I know one dude, I know, man, it's, it's a lot of people in men. I know people across the board everywhere. Mm -hmm. I know one dude our age that makes six figures. And he mm -hmm. said out of college, it took him seven years to get to the point where he made six figures. Mm -hmm. And so with that, it's like, okay, well, going back to the choices thing, it's like, what you choosing? Like, is that your choice? Like, if if for you to say, okay, well, I want to be with a high value man. This isn't that. That's your choice. But just know what come with your choices. Like, you not gonna meet just a man making six figures, just walking around in the grocery store. Like, it don't happen like that. But even Place, in even Place. in society, it's like okay, well, even if a woman got kids, they don't make her value no lower. Mm -hmm. And if I don't make six figures, they don't make my value any higher. Yeah. Cause like for me, one of the things that I uh, value myself on is I know how to get stuff done. I'm I'm a man that got connections. Like yeah. Whenever somebody hit me up with a job, I know people that work in fields all across the board. So mm -hmm. my value is measured for me first of all my relationship with God. Yeah. And then it's value. My value is like okay, like what? How can I make stuff happen? Yep. around me mm -hmm. so I don't, I don't think like to, again go back to choices man when you got to choose for me i made the choice maybe like five years ago mm -hmm. that if it's not in the bible i don't i don't live by it and i had to like my pastor got to keep reiterating it to me like either i'm gonna believe the bible or i'm not gonna believe it and so i i can't say that like if this your choice this your choice if you think that you have value and a woman with kids going Make you less valuable, or you a simp and all this. Then that's mm -hmm. on you. Uh, like you were saying, like you were saying, no, mm -hmm. uh, you were saying how that's based on the choices. Yeah, and, and it's that's true to this day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's it's sad because I think what people are starting to do is block their own blessings. On yeah, their own. yeah. Like this is what they starting to do now. Yeah. It's like you can have a, a man or a woman, you know, mm -hmm. and, and be a different standard than what the world may see. Mm -hmm. But if that person make you happy and you at peace, yeah. that's really what you want. Yeah. You know, that's really what you want. I mean, yeah. everybody had their purpose on who they like. I think there was a quote people would say back in the day, oh, man, if he, if he like it, I love it. Like, that's, yeah. that's, what, that's, yeah. what, that's what I think people need to understand and have yeah. grace. Like, somebody choose to date somebody in them situations and stuff like that. Yeah. That's something that they choose to do. And yeah. if they're happy with it and you can see they're happy with it, then it's cool. But if you yeah. see it's bringing them sorrow, 
you know, they always calling about something messy yeah. going on and something happened left and right with this person. Yeah. You have to be like, hey, man, I know you're going through this or whatever, but like, mm -hmm. man, I don't know. I don't know how long you want to. Continue this situation yeah. if he gonna do that to you, or if from yeah. one perspective you keep going on with this dude mm -hmm. left and right, something always happening. Like yeah. those relationships, I think at that point God just be yeah. like, all right, yeah, do you know, do <laughs> how many ear jobs you want because yeah. I'm I, at this point I'm not doing it because God gonna let you make the choice. Yeah, He gonna let you yeah. make the choice. He gonna let you do what you wanna do, yeah. but He gonna also let you reciprocate and, yeah. and understand that. When you make this choice, these yeah. are the consequences too. Like, are you sleeping well at night? Yeah. Are you losing sleep? You got anxiety. You thinking she cheating on you? Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, like, those things are not of a good relationship. Yeah. And it's like a, a indicator. And I yeah. think people, especially when they're in love, man, mm -hmm. they they just don't even <laughs> don't look at the indicators no yeah. more. I mean, when you're in love, it's like love is blind for real. Yeah. You know, especially <laughs> like your first love, second or third, yeah. whatever it is, yeah. you just be blinded to everything. You just make mm -hmm. excuses for everything because you're like, man, I mean, I love him. Oh, I love him so much. Yeah. And you can love him so much, but you also can love him so much from afar. Yeah. You can love him so much from a distance. Yeah. You don't have to actually be with them. In love. Yeah. You can love him right now and not say nothing to him. Yeah. You know, and I think people understand yeah. that that's what, yeah. that's, how, that's how God is. He loves unconditionally. So mm -hmm. like, even though, we, we we pray and everything and all that stuff like that. Like mm -hmm. we do all of that, and he he you you either gonna listen or you not. Yeah. You know this is really it. he talk to you let you know. Yeah. But if you ain't listening, it is it. But um, I think that goes to my second thing is like, do you think that? Uh, well, I think I, I already know what your answer is probably. But what do you <laughs> think about how how culture is uh, promoting like you know the 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 sex before marriage, the alcohol, mm -hmm. the drugs, uh, like promoting all of these things that really is, you know, honestly kind of aligning with Sodom and Gomorrah and stuff. Yeah. Like, I mean, mm -hmm. what is your perspective on it and how, I'm not going to say you're afraid, but how worried are you? And I know no people say don't worry, but how do you mm -hmm. feel as far as like the repercussions of these actions in our world that, that we're doing now and we keep, keep like reiterating it to our youth? Like, what mm -hmm. do you see for that? Oh, oh that's good. I, I will, first of all, we just know like history most of the time it repeats itself. And it's like until we learn, until we learn a lesson from this stuff, like we just keep repeating it. I, you know, we're going to keep repeating the same stuff as humans. But as far as like the youth go, I, I don't I don't like worrying about it because like, like I said, I just know that like Jesus is my source. And so I know if, if I can get the youth to know who Jesus is, like it'll always, they'll always come back. Like in Proverbs, it say, train up a child in the way that they should go. And when he gets older, he will not depart from it. Just like me, like I went astray. I did all this stuff, but then I came back to what I knew was right. Yeah. And so with all this stuff, I, I try not to worry about it. Cause I mean, it's, it's supposed to happen anyway. Yeah. So I can't, I can't necessarily control it. I can't do nothing about it, but yeah. like I can't change it. But if if I can just get as many folks, you know, in front of Jesus as I can, then I know that that'll change, you know, yeah. that'll at least make a dent in it. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I agree with you on that, man. I, I think for me, uh Sam, like you said, like I I think this all it's all in his plan. Mm -hmm. like, he definitely is um orchestrating this whole thing. Even yeah. though the world just think that they God and think that they controlling this stuff, they're really yeah. not. You can't control the weather. And people started these rumors of weather machines and all yeah. this other stuff. Oh, yeah. They're like, man, give yeah. God his credit, please. Yeah. Like, yeah. stop it. Like, y'all yeah. gotta look at the reality of it. Like, it ain't no yeah. machine outside for how beautiful it look out here. It ain't no yeah, machine. Like, it's it. not, man. Yeah. I mean, but you know, people have these things that they mm. say and believe, and it's it's something they learn through time. But yeah. I think when it comes to life, God reminds you every time, like I always been there. No mm. matter how much you probably negate me, don't think I'm real. Yeah. Whatever it is, I've always been there for you. And mm. uh, I think this movie called uh, God's Not Dead. It was this oh, guy, this it. Dead man, it good movie, man. But in the mm. movie, basically, the man was an atheist, man, yeah. his whole entire life. Mm -hmm. And um, when he he was on his deathbed, man, uh, he got to like Christ in the movie, mm -hmm. and he finally like admitted like. Yeah, it's God. Like he, yeah. he finally admitted it. Like yeah, yeah. like I, I got to admit, like God was 
You know, I, yeah. I admit that he was my Lord and Savior. Like, yeah. and it was the last moments he said it, but he he realized that like uh, it was one of the part of the movie that was very very deep to me. And it was like because mm-hmm. there's people I know that go through stuff like this. Like, yeah. the one in the part of the movie, the the atheist man was talking to his mom. He was like, "Well, if I got a guy, if I if I did a guy, wouldn't he be here right now? Or why not be going through some whatever?" And she, his mom was like, "You don't have to be going through nothing for." Uh, God to be there, like you don't have to be going through that. Like he, he, the devil will literally avoid you on purpose because mm-hmm. he knows that he, he knows that you're not gonna do nothing. Yeah, like he ain't gonna. Yeah. You, you gonna have a, a beautiful life yeah. and <laughs> not have one thing happen yeah. because the devil wasn't threatened by you. Yeah, he threatened by the people that know the word yeah. and know how to articulate it and mm-hmm. make it transparent, like you just did. Yeah. Like people that don't go to church, they yeah. probably gonna look at this and be like, oh man, like. I gotta look at what Samson was going on. Yeah. I didn't see this. What this story yeah. about? Let me look at you know. What I'm so it's just build that curiosity. And when people, yeah. when God bless you with that type yeah. of translation, we ain't talking about Spanish or English. No, we are talking about translation, translating the Bible. Yeah. Like that is a hard thing to do. Yeah. When you could do stuff like that, that's a threat to the devil. Yeah. So your life ain't gonna be easy. Yeah. You think you think you, you think it'll be easy? I mean, yeah. you, we live yeah. in the times where we John Wick, man. Yeah. Like the people that's actually trying to do good in the world, yeah. they are really living a tough life yeah. because you're trying to actually change the paradigm because yeah. the devil wants the world to go left, yeah. like all the way left, worse yeah. than what it is now. Like he want everybody out here shooting, so they come out dope yeah. shooting in the morning. Like that's what he yeah. want. But you got peace outside. Yeah. You got everybody driving nice, no wrecks. Like. Mm-hmm. Chaos is what he builds yeah. on. So I know yeah. chaos is like, man, well, I'm crazy chaos. Well, you know what? I'm gonna do this to your life. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make your mama go off on you. I'm gonna make, yeah. I'm gonna make your job hard. I'm gonna make your boss yeah. be on nerves. I'm gonna make your coworkers go on nerves. I'm gonna do yeah. all of this stuff to make you stop doing what you're doing. Mm-hmm. But it ain't gonna stop nothing. Like even yeah. my computer today, my computer's acting weird, whatever. But you ain't gonna stop me because we still recording. As long as we exactly. got the red button on, <laughs> yeah. we straight. Yeah. yeah, we definitely straight. But. But we're going to start wrapping this up, man. But yeah. I got a couple more questions. So, like, my last question, one of my last questions. I got two more to go. Okay. My last one is, um, if you if you had um, if you had the opportunity to uh, talk to your younger self mm-hmm. uh, about your purpose or, or where you're going to be, mm-hmm. like, what would you what would you tell them? Uh, well, first, I just want to say something real quick about oh, yeah. what you just said. Yeah. Man, I just want people to be encouraged. I, I heard something the other day, and it blew my mind. Well, the first thing is that the devil only got the power that you allow him to have. Oh, man. Like, yeah. Satan cannot make you do anything. God don't make you do nothing. So Satan definitely can't make you do nothing. <laughs> and then, too, the character of Satan is that he's not omnipotent. Like, he can't be everywhere at one time. Mm-hmm. So I don't I don't get worried thinking, like, the devil going to try to attack me in this area or that area yeah. because he can't, he can't do that. He can't be everywhere at once. Oh, man. So he don't have that power. So I just want people to be encouraged yeah. with that. But uh, what you said about, like, what would I tell my younger self about my purpose? Uh, what I would tell my younger self is that, like, that's what life is about, finding my purpose. And not necessarily, like, finding it, but, like, my purpose, first of all, purpose comes from inside you. Like, your purpose, you were born with what God wanted you to do. Mm-hmm. And so, like, going and trying to seek purpose and do, like, it, you don't necessarily have to do that. All you got to do is seek God and seek the kingdom of God. And your purpose will be revealed. Mm-hmm. So I would have told myself, like, don't go to college. Because I didn't necessarily need college. What I studied in college for, and then I didn't even graduate. So I wasted all that time and money and to not do, you know, yeah. like what I was called to do. But I just tell my younger self, man, seek the kingdom of God and your purpose will be revealed to you mm-hmm. in time. So like that, I think that's what I tell my younger self. Man, that's yeah. deep. That's deep. What, what age you would have told your younger self that? What From a kid. Just as soon as you were born, like yeah. round three, like one, two? Yeah. Okay. Because like, yeah. that, that's what you, like what I've been learning lately is like, when your kids are young, instill purpose in them when they're young. Because once they get older, it's like, okay, it's kind of hard. Because now you're thinking about, okay, well, I, I, I want to go to college. I want to, mm-hmm. like the world and told you, okay, you got to go to school. You got to get a good job. You got to do this. But if you're telling the kid from when they're young that they got a purpose, when they get 15, 16, it's like, Okay, I'm just finna look. I'm just finna start trying to figure out, how, you know, what's being revealed to me. What am, what is God calling me to? So <laughs> I'm gonna tell myself that from younger, from Dang. a little kid. Like this is what I'm gonna do with my kids. Like yeah. when they come out the womb, you got a purpose. You know? Man, yep, so, I feel you on that. I, yeah. I think for me, I would have did the same. I probably would have told my younger self that like around maybe five, mm-hmm. four or five, would have did that. Um, 
I think yeah. it would have been the, one of the weird moments. Like, oh my God, where do you come from? Like, the yeah. LeBron talking to LeBron. <laughs> like, yeah. who are you? You know what yeah. I'm saying? Would have been it, the barrier. But yeah. I think uh, the younger me would have definitely been remembering that all the way to now that I'm 30. Like, man, yeah. I remember, like, seeing my older self. Like, yeah. um, it definitely would have been official. I think definitely now we're both in the time where the generation change is about to happen. Mm -hmm. Like, we're about to be in a different light in the world yeah. um, based on doing what we're doing right now. Yeah. I, I really truly believe it. And I believe that these these conversations need to happen way more often yeah. than not. And more um, people that are leaders of the church, man, just be open mm -hmm. to talk to people outside of their realm. You yeah, have to yeah. be because... Oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, you have to be. A lot of people don't want to do it because they want reciprocation. So, mm -hmm. like, if... If I'm doing something, I want I want yeah. this in return. You know, so this this how like yeah, a lot of the, some of those some of those leaders yeah. are. But mm -hmm. I understand yeah, we get yeah, it. Yeah. But at the same time, man, we all got platforms. And you've been having mm -hmm. the you know from just saying from from a typical religious leader, yeah. you having the same platform all these years. Yeah. So now you have to like you have to challenge yourself and go outside of yeah. it because you have to have people come back. I think that's what Michael Todd was doing. He was on Random People Podcast, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You know, and it, and it, like he was talking to his church every Sunday, yeah. but it just, those things just like bring you out. It just pops it yeah. out and people like really understand. Okay, let me, let me at least open the Bible today. Because yeah. it's really what you want to leave people to. Hey, yeah. let me at least open the Bible and see what's going on and stuff yeah. like that. And um, my last question, okay. uh, how yeah. do you remain disciplined uh, in general? Mm -hmm. You know, you change your life. Mm -hmm. You know, like you said, you said you following the Bible and stuff like yeah. that. And if it's not in the Bible, you don't do mm -hmm. it. Like, how did you get your discipline, strength into it? And how do you, how, what advice you would give to somebody that's trying to learn discipline and try mm -hmm. to get into the level you at? Uh, man, I say this, I'm not perfect by a long stretch. Mm -hmm. I still, man, because like, just like even just like the, the mundane stuff, like, man, I still get horny and all this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, I still want to have sex. I still want to do all this kind of stuff. But my my desire to know Jesus is what keeps me from going out and just having sex outside of me. Mm -hmm. My desire to know Jesus is what keep me in that word. My desire mm -hmm. to know Jesus is what do this. So the only thing I can tell people is, like, in Matthew 6, 33, what I keep saying, seek the kingdom of God and his mm -hmm. righteousness. Mm -hmm. And and so that's, that's really what drives me, mm -hmm. just knowing, like, okay, man, like, somebody laid down their life for me. 2,000 years ago, somebody got on the cross and was like, okay, like, mm -hmm. I want to die for this dude. Yeah. And, and that's what keep me going. And, and, and two, if I can leave people with anything, it's like, don't, don't go to the Bible. It's like, it's a religion. Because that's, that's the... That's the biggest key mm -hmm. is it's not a religion. It's a relationship. Mm -hmm. I, I told somebody the other day, mm -hmm. when you read the Bible, read the Bible from the perspective of it's a king that want to be your friend. Like th Jesus was a king that wanted yeah. to be your friend. Mm -hmm. Like he want to be our friend. And then one more, my mentor, like mm -hmm. having mentors, like um, my pastor has mm -hmm. been like a father to me the past five years. And even just going back on what you were saying, mm -hmm. like people want stuff in return. My pastor freed me when he told me, he said, my kid, I don't want nothing from you. Mm -hmm. And I can see that because he let me operate in his church. Like he let me preach, he let me mm -hmm. teach, he let me do stuff in the church. Mm -hmm. And so, man, just like my love for Jesus and just knowing who he is, mm -hmm. uh, knowing that he want to be my friend, yeah. you know, like my perspective on the Bible is like, it's not a religion. And then like having a mentor like this, that's what I can attribute my success to. Yeah. Man, that's dope. Y'all heard that man? <laughs> he's speaking. He's speaking facts right now. You have to. You need relationships. Yeah. You need to have your relationship with God. Yeah. And you know, basic. And that's how you get to where you. That's how you get to where we are. I mean, mm -hmm. I know that we may not be in no Steve Harvey level and like this. I'm just no. saying that we're we're actually serving our purpose. So that yeah. puts you in the top 25 percent whatever you want to call it yeah but a lot of people not serving their purpose you know a lot of people yeah. doing jobs that they don't like yeah. and all this other stuff but we're actually trying to better the world through ourselves but mm. back to what he was saying though is it man like he said I, I, I get horny like that too yeah. uh, <laughs> it's, it's a new it's another thing i want to talk about this last one this last okay. one okay. 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 Cool. Cool. Man, cool. man, we got a conversation going man y'all need to watch it y'all watch this <laughs> I'll talk for hours. Watch it, man. We, we got time little man y'all better just sit down and watch this but mm -hmm. so um 
It's a, have you ever heard of the no fap and semen retention? Yeah, you heard about that? Yeah, so, um, <laughs> so for me, um, I was introduced to it like around, I think 2020, mm -hmm. uh, around, uh, 2020 was, I heard about semen retention the first time. Yeah. And like, it's like so crazy because it, it in 2020 it wasn't a, a big thing, but now yeah. slowly and surely people are like getting more comfortable talking yeah. about it. It gets to a level where it's like, okay, I'm breaking this curse. I'm yeah. I'm breaking this curse from from porn and and yeah. jacking off and all that stuff, masturbating, yeah. all that stuff, right? Yeah. So like, from a from a religious from a Christianity perspective yeah. too, like, do you do you know anything as far as like the correlation of semen retention and stuff, like withholding yeah. and not me and Sally and stuff like that like mm -hmm. have you seen any benefits from you doing it like as your far as your life goes yeah. oh man see okay you talk about being transparent so yeah. I'm just gonna be I'm just gonna keep it all in yeah. one yeah well uh, man so I've been in ministry since 2018 okay and since 2018 I like I told myself like if I'm gonna be preaching this stuff I want to live it so since then I've only actually had sex three times oh man but I've struggled with masturbation uh -huh. the whole time. I've struggled with masturbation from the jump. Mm -hmm. And so I, I can say this. I've seen benefits as far as like the times where I went like five, six months, like not masturbating. Mm -hmm. I seen I, I had more energy. Mm -hmm. uh, I was more focused because I wasn't necessarily like my mind wasn't just focused on sex like that all the mm -hmm. time. But as I've gotten, you know, just like keep going on my journey, mm -hmm. I'm noticing that man, uh, with like struggling with masturbation and porn and all that kind of stuff, it's like I think it's uh, like overplayed in the media and all that because it's like man, okay, yeah, like you 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 can like go a period of like five six months without doing it, but it's like like we young men, so we gonna get on it. Yeah. So it's like all right, it's hard, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Yeah. And so. I just like for me what I've done is just put like barriers in place and boundaries in place. Uh -huh. So for me it's a uh, it's this Christian website. What they do is they they help you to overcome porn because mm -hmm. I was addicted to porn. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it's called Covenant Eyes. So for all my men who are out there struggling, Covenant Eyes, uh -huh. and uh, you got to pay for it. And like I it, I was getting charged eighteen ninety nine a month, but man, I've been living in my bank statements and they ain't been charging me, but it's still on my phone. <laughs> We're gonna take it off. We're gonna take it off. We ain't gonna let no. We ain't gonna let no. We're gonna cut that. Uh, they have. But, uh, <laughs> but um, but what it does is, man, I made two my two uh closest friends who both struggled with porn and they got over. I made them administrators on my account. So if I ever look at porn, it'll call. Like they, one of them told me, bro, I got a call, and I wasn't even doing nothing at this point. Like I don't know why I called them, but he told me he had a, he got a call. Oh, yeah. But what it does is, it, it, like it, it um uses VPNs on mm -hmm. your phone, your devices, whatever you put it on. Mm -hmm. And if you look at some porn, it's on there to tell them. And so, like I just say this, man, like like I said, I noticed when I wasn't doing it, like I had more energy and stuff, mm -hmm. but I, I get to a point where I was like, I was gonna explode, bro. So I was like, okay, let me just yeah, really yeah, quit playing. You yeah, know? when you get to the, the, blue, but, yeah. Yeah, the, the, the blue area, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but two, I say this too, if, if you don't get control of your mm -hmm. struggle with masturbation and porn. When you yeah. get married, it'll just magnify. <laughs> so like that, just like who you are. Woo! It's it's two things that I know Deep. magnifies who you are. Well, three things: uh, fame will magnify who you are. Marriage will magnify who you are, and like getting a lot of money, it'll only magnify who you already are. Mm -hmm. So if you don't get control of this stuff before you get any of those three, it'll just be magnified. Yeah, man. So, Whew, boy, it's been a lot of them. It was one of the stats was saying that, uh, you know, um, us as men, you know, we create. Yeah. So, like, us actually having a seed in our body, mm -hmm. um, it takes work to get that, right? Yeah. So, when we do that, it takes a lot of energy. But the thing about yeah. this, they were saying that research studies show that when a man ejaculates, it's equal to him running six miles. Oh, that's crazy. I never heard that. Right. And when I heard that, I was like, when I heard it, Markel, I was like, yeah. six miles? Six miles. Six miles. Crazy. And then I was like, yeah. and I was thinking, I was just like, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Yeah. Six miles. Yeah. Now, you mind you, depending on what you're doing, yeah. you know what I'm saying, it, it can last from, from it can be 10 seconds to uh, yeah. 30 minutes, you know what I'm yeah. saying? But for that to be six miles, though, yeah. and... Man, this year, this year was like one of the uh, first years I ran yeah. six miles. Yeah. Like so, and I just ran eight last week, and I was mm -hmm. just like, 
I was like, man, like my energy has been skyrocketing. You know, I've just been thinking about it all the time. I've been like, man, like I know that, you know, us as men, we have needs stuff like that and we got stuff that we got to handle, but we have to know how to transmute our sexual energy. And I think that's what you're talking about. Like you went that time without, without doing and stuff like that. And you paused and all that. Those times helped you become the man you are today because it's always power and discipline and power and recovering. Cause you know that failure probably would happen, but yeah. as long as you recover from it, hey, I did 21 a day today, okay, cool. Mm-hmm. And next week, I'm doing 35. And 35, yeah. now I'm doing 90. Like, yeah. I'm going hard every time. Like, I'm not gonna make, I'm not gonna make sex a priority no more. I'm not making yeah. pornography a priority no more. I'm not making women and having sex with a priority no more, because this is yeah. all culture preaching. This is yeah. all culture preaching. Yeah. Man, go get them. Bad girl, bad girl, bad girl, yeah. bad girl, on bad girl, bad girl here, bad girl there. Left, right, left, right. Like, yeah. that's, all, that's all they say. So yeah. then you go, you go anywhere, anywhere you go. Mm-hmm. Everybody like, oh, man, man, that bad girl, that bad girl there. Yeah. Like, I was at the game last night with my homeboy, yeah. man. I was just chilling. I was just chilling. Yeah. I said, man, I'm in the moment, bro. Like, yeah. we close to see stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, we good, you know what I'm saying? And then, um. Uh, he, he loved whatever he came back to, man. Man, he said, man, he went, man. I'm there with it. I was like, I, mean, I, mean, I don't even feel like I missed out. I ain't gonna lie. Like, I'm still watching the game, man. It's all I'm focused on. Yeah. So, uh, but definitely those things I want, you know, especially the young men to understand yeah. is, you know, it's your sexual energy. You're not gonna know really what to do with it in the beginning, but you have to start practicing transmuting it into your yeah. purpose, into that school work you're doing. You know, when you're in school, you gotta be in school. You're in high yeah. school, maybe middle school. Just do your schoolwork. It's gonna help yeah. you with your schoolwork. You're gonna do better with that. You know, go to church with your parents. Like, mm-hmm. r- reduce the arguing. You know, don't don't try to debate all day. <laughs> yeah. Like, just, I'm telling you, your life is gonna be different. Yeah. But uh, but last but not least, man, I just want to give Marquez his flowers, man. This man changed his life. I've known him oh, since middle God. school, man. We reconnected. I tell people it's a power and placement and partnership. Yeah. And this yeah. is one of them today, man. He's did a lot for the community and uh, trying to change people's lives through himself, man. He's a living example of that. And like he just told y'all, like, he make mistakes and stuff like that. Like, yeah. how many religious leaders you know going to say that? <laughs> how many? Let me know. Let, I want to know. Let, put, hey, tag them in the chat. <laughs> tag them in the chat right now. They're going to be transparent like this. Yeah. So, But uh, but I don't know, man. I thank you for coming, man. Yeah. I thank you yeah. for uh, being here today. Uh, I appreciate what you're doing, man, and yeah. definitely keep doing what you're doing because yeah. I feel that years from now, man, you're going to see the dividends of what you're doing, mm-hmm. man. Like, it's like early stock. All mm-hmm. this early stock, man, yeah. it blows up, it blows up, man. Yeah. But right now, I think you saw the glimpse of it in 2020 when everybody yeah. was going, you know, going to church and yeah. stuff. So yeah. we about to go into that reset again, yeah. though. But I don't know, y'all. So we just going to tell y'all, thank y'all for tuning in to the Purpose mm-hmm. of Talk podcast, man. See y'all next week. Peace out. Knowledge.